Welcome to Glow and Tell, a podcast about all things beauty, wellness, and business, sponsored by Artemis, the brand empowering the unsung heroes of beauty and wellness. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to Glow and Tell. We are so excited for today's episode where we have a really nice panel of guests uh, to be sharing with you on building a winning team. Um, I have Amir Rastamirad here, who is the co-founder of Bote Aesthetics in New York City. Amir, I would love for you to just start off by introducing yourself, your background, how you came to where you are now, and you know what is kind of on the horizon for Bote, as well as introducing your amazing team. Sure. Uh, yeah, my name is Amir. I've been <clears throat> in the industry of aesthetics around I think going 11 years now, uh, how I came I'm background, I'm a banker, uh, over-the-counter trader. Uh, I have my serious six and seven, call it dropout. And uh, uh, yeah, it's been doing it for 10, 11 years. How I came about into the industry was uh, bought into, a, you know, my first, very, very first location. I, I think, yeah, about 10, 10 years ago or so. And uh, that became to another one, to another one, to another one. And uh, Bote came around. How Bote came around was I had a little small place on Madison Avenue, which uh, I, I got a very good offer, you know, to, uh, from a buyer to buy that place and my Midtown location at the time. And at the same time, right before uh, Bote came around, I was looking to expand because that place was so packed that there, we were like, well, 120 days wait time on that look to, you know, that, that location. And, you know, I came around to uh, meet my future business partner, which is Vicky. Uh, she's here with us. And uh, that deal didn't go through at that time. Actually, it was like the day that this whole city got shut down. The lease was, was about to be out. And uh, unfortunately, we had to cancel, but me and Vicky stayed in touch. And, you know, I was going to rent where Bote is as expansion to that location that I had. And unfortunately, whatever we were doing, it wasn't, you know, the deal wasn't happening. And um, I, the person that I, you know, supposed to buy my Midtown location and Upper East Side location at the time, they quickly realized that it was too much for them to handle. And they backed out of that Midtown location because I was about to pack my stuff and leave, you know, New York for good. I thought I was done. And, uh, you know, me and Vicky kept in touch during the pandemic. You know, she was being Vicky, always, you know, caring and nice and always, you know, send me, you know, here's text message. How are you doing? This and this and that. And we kept in touch. And, you know, next thing you know, one day, you know, she calls me. She goes, I've been thinking about this for two days. I want you to meet me. And I was like, sure. She goes, are you leaving me? I said, I'm thinking about it, but I don't think it's happening. And uh, she goes, okay, come meet me. I went to Upper East Side. So we sat in a diner or <clears throat> was a restaurant. And we just talked about it. And this uh, project came, you know, came around. And about two and a half years later, we are proud of what we've done to be honest with you it's so uh, it's amazing amazing you know look you, you never know what happens in the background a lot of crazy things happens in the background but we always you know right here and you know we are i can say the i think this team is the best team hands down in new york city uh, honestly you know at this point after two and a half years a lot of up and downs in in a back office and which you know now everybody it's like orchestra everybody at this point you know plays their tune and a beautiful music come out and then <clears throat> if you want introduction sure as i said vicky Karabi is my business partner uh you know the mother of the company you know she's the, you know she cares for everyone checks on everyone you know she's uh i'm lucky she's a nurse practitioner on top of that that's the winner then we go up, that's Lexi. Uh, Lexi, she's been with me for six years. She, uh, I think when I met her, she used to be so scared to even face me that she used to go hide in Grand Central not to be face to face with me in elevators <laughs> to like come mm -hmm. and leave. And um, yeah, now she's the chief operating officer of uh, the whole operation at the age of 26. 
which I'm very proud of her. Uh, very, you know, like uh, the amount of work and meltdown I gave to her is not, you know, fair. Uh, then we got Shamsha. She's been with me for eight years. She's mostly more in like corporate side of things, and we, you know, uh, we have uh, we have other projects that she's, you know, as well as Bote and other projects. You know, she does all the back ends. You know, just she has a paralegal background, so like the last checks sort of thing, budgeting. Mm-hmm. You know, she's the one that puts me in check pretty much, you know. And yeah. as far as the first uh, screen of uh, hiring, and then we have Ben. Ben's the latest and the greatest uh, and joined us in October. I remember we were, you know, first we got together. I said, okay, guys, you know, we need to go, you know, we need to take this to the next level. I said, we need a marketing director. Mm. And I just put, like, who am I looking for? So we start interviewing people, you know, we start interviewing, interviewing. And then it was Ben, Ben came out, like it was close to nine o'clock at night, 10 minutes late. He just came like, he doesn't have, like, he doesn't care that he was like 10 minutes late. And he's very arrogant. You know, the call went on. He didn't like let me talk much. I was just trying to, he kept calling me <laughs> doctor, doctor. I said, I said, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> and then we, you know, you know, we hung up and then we just looked at each other and said, I told him I like the guy. He's an a-hole. I, he's just like me. I like him. <laughs> yeah, he's hired. <laughs> oh, I love that. I yeah, think that then, you... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and yeah, here we are. And, you know, two and a half years later, um, we have uh, successfully with uh, Vicky's Take. Look, uh, there's so many med spas in New York, left and right, every other block. It's the people inside that makes a difference. Otherwise, mm. everybody has the same machine. Look, for example, we are, um, if I'm not mistaken, top 1% provider or top uh, 1% provider of Morpheus aid in the nation. That, that shows you how many Morpheus treatments we've done. Why is that? Because of the techniques that, you know, extra work that Vicky puts and studying, you know, make, give all these things. And then her results are before and afters. And then, you know, we go with uh, Lexi, you know, making sure everything is, you know, Operation was on the ground. Everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. The minute you open, you know, you come from the entrance downstairs to come to the third floor, you smell the spa. You know you're there. You understand? Uh, and then till the, the minute that you leave, and then you have Shamsha behind, you know, stressing over me spending money, <laughs> texting me enough, enough, <laughs> enough, you know, and you know, and you know, just making sure you know the hiring process goes smoothly. And then, you know, they all came together, you know, for me to take a step back. And then on top of that, you know, with the marketing, with his, uh, you know, with his flair of uh, putting words together, you know, as far as the marketing goes, you know, it's, it's been a rough ride because he's just getting used to me, not even to the process. Getting used to me is 90% of the work, you know, the rest, uh, uh, you know, the rest comes with it. You know, it's, I don't know. I mean. I'm sure to the Artemis people is not is everybody knows I'm not easy to deal with. You know when I wanted to pick up certain product from Artemis, you guys told me we you know we're gonna be there at noon. I said what do you mean noon? I was there at 8 a.m. by your uh, Brooklyn warehouse in my Ferrari. I said I put it in the back of the Ferrari. Yeah, you're knocking the, you're knocking down yeah, doors. I like, yeah, I was yeah. I was knocking. I was 8 a.m. in Brooklyn and everybody's looking at me like I got two heads that I'm about to put this device in the back of a Ferrari and take it with me. I said, I'm not going to wait till noon. Right. I have clients, you know? Which I, and, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, lo- I love this about you and just hearing your introduction and even the way that you introduce your team, I just think yeah. it. there's this incredible self-awareness with you and the sense of humor. And I just yeah. think that it's so important as an entrepreneur to really have that and something that you touched on a little bit and I definitely want to get to the team and have them introduce themselves as well. But, you know, even when you're describing Ben's interview process, you know, you're you're hiring for, for the people, right? You're hiring, not in the the cookie cutter of this is exactly what I I should be looking for. You're hiring for people that are going to work really well with the way that you know that you work and what you expect and what you usually within first, first two minutes of interview, if I get up from it, it means that you didn't get the job. (laughs) <laughs> Two minutes. I don't care what your resume yeah. says, you know, how many places you've been, what you know. Two minutes. Uh, usually that's all it takes. That's all I have the patience for. You know, yeah. I just look at you. Either you sell yourself, you know, to me that you're the right person or you're not. 
or I'm like looking at the walls, just um, asking yeah. if you have any questions for me. A hundred percent. Well, that's good uh, to know for anyone who ever interviews at yeah. Bote. It's good to, yeah. good to have that little tidbit of insight. Yeah, I mean, usually now I step back. I usually show up on the second or third one, but you know, I let the lady, you know, take the lead now, mm-hmm. and I spend the time with my dog. So you know, just uh, love it. You know, I, yeah. So, but yeah, let uh, Vicky and everyone else take the floor. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, Amazing. Just, just start. Yes. Sounds great. So yeah, Vicky, if you want to take it away, would love to hear a little bit more from you from your perspective of things, especially now that we've heard and know that, you know, the business might not have been had Amir left, had you not had this, you know, kind of diner conversation. Um, I love kind of the, the idea of, of thinking about that and visualizing that, but would love to hear a bit more about your background, how long you've been in aesthetics for, you know, obviously you're a nurse practitioner with an amazing amount of experience so would love to hear a little bit more about that your background and what you do now at Bote. that's a lot um <laughs> but I don't do a lot I, I'm I stay in my lane pretty much mm-hmm. um I was not always in aesthetics only mm-hmm. when I met Amir is that when it started and it came as a nun gets a calling to be religious and you know not partake in anything else but the church. Okay, so for me, I was a certified nurse midwife and a women's health nurse practitioner. I worked at Mount Sinai and other private practices, and um, I dedicate myself and my life to helping others, and it's in memory of my mother, who had ovarian cancer, and my sister who had breast cancer. And so there's a passion behind whatever I do as far as treating aesthetic clients. I see each of one, each and every one of them as my patient who I have to take care of. So generally speaking, um, a typical introduction to me is generally a nervous, anxious client who is very afraid that I'm going to stick pins or a very hot ultrasound on their face, and I'm just going to make sure that they're going to be a okay. Mm. So literally everything just melts away, and that's my role here is to make sure that everyone is safe and sound as far as clients and as far as staff, and our dearest Amir is to make sure that we are all okay. And I'm just here to just call everyone darling and... (laughs) See what they need and um, also kind of make sure that my type A personality of looking at everything is sort of staying in check with um, Shamsha and Lexi and Amir and Ben. And we all just sort of calm each other down or rile each other up. But either way, at the end of the day, it's a beautiful, beautiful product. Oh, so that's it. all I really have to say <laughs> about that. I am, I was retired and I was not doing this. Um, It came as a calling. Like Amir said, it was just two nights that it came to my head and Mm -hmm. I dedicate it to um, the ones I love. And um, I think that everybody is in it to, for each other and also to win it. So that's all I have to say. Everybody else can can join in. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much, Vicky, for sharing and for sharing so vulnerably too about that purpose and that kind of mission driven approach coming from such a beautiful place with your family. I think that that really is such a driving force for so many people in this industry. And it's often something that might be overlooked by some people that we really are doing such good in the beauty industry because we're helping people to feel better and look better and, you know, just be able to move in the world a little bit differently. Um, So I love that you come at it with that approach and also, you know, on the team. And I think your explanation matches Amir's, you know, kind of description of you as the mother of of the team and really that kind of nurturing presence that helps everyone to feel like they're being taken care of. And that trickling down to clients is such an important part of your brand identity. And I'm sure a very important part of how you have been able to build such lifetime client base as well. Um, so Shamsha, do you want to introduce yourself next and same prompts, just, you know, a little bit about your background, how long you've been with the business and what it is, um, that you do for Bote. Um, I literally fell into this. I have more of a business (laughs) background. I was a paralegal debating law school and I was like, I just, that's too much. I think I'm not going to focus for four more years. Um, so I went to aesthetic school. Uh, I'm actually from Tennessee. 
And um, New York was always a dream for me. So I was like, let me see. So I have this brand new aesthetics license. I fly to New York. I have a bunch of interviews set up. And I'm like, you know, if this goes well, I pack my stuff and I come. And if not, mm. so I get an interview at this place on Fifth Avenue, Amir's, one of Amir's first places. And I'm like, there's no way. I have no, like, he gave me a chance. He was like, tell her to pack her stuff. And eight years later, I'm still here. So it worked out really well for me. Um, and I feel like I'm able to bridge a gap between um, between Vicky's type A and Amir's chaos. Because <laughs> I'm, I, Amazing. I have a good ba balancing act. I analyze everything like Vicky does. But then I'm like, what would Amir think about this? So I think that's worked out pretty well. I do a lot of the back-end work. I mean, I don't even know what title any of us have because we all just... Everyone's hands on, you know, everyone's all in, but um, it's been a pleasure working with, um, with Amir. It is, it is 90% of the process is getting to know him. And once you put that in, it's my like, crazy I, mind of thinking, making no, things up. It's like, as it's like I you walk. put so much into it. You don't want to walk away now. You're too invested. <laughs> and then um, Vicky calling us darling and being sweet to us is honestly gets us through some of the days. So them combined is exactly what we need. That's so incredible. And I love that you are speaking to something that I think is so important within a team dynamic is, is having these bridges and these, these people that serve as the glue, right? And how you're thinking and context switching between these two different personality types, between two different ways of thinking, because we have our very creatives, we have our very strategics, our more operationally driven. And so I think that having people who are really um, kind of there to help communicate and, and kind of bridge those gaps, but also having talent that fills in for your potential opportunities for growth. So knowing your strengths being such an important thing on a team, especially if you're a hiring manager, is knowing your strengths and knowing where your weaknesses are so you can fill in for those gaps, right? Um, perfect. I would love to have Lexi, you go next and introduce yourself. Really excited to hear about your background as well. Okay, so I'm Lexi. I have been an esthetician for six years, seven years now. And I lived upstate. I went to school in New York City and then I didn't really work as an esthetician for about a year and I finally decided I wanted to get more into aesthetics and actually use my license. So the first job I had gotten was with Amir and I was still living upstate so I would kind of commute back and forth work like three days a week. You know didn't think anything of it. It was just kind of like a job go in do my work go home. After about two years of that, he was going to open Ute. So I went to him and pretty much said, I don't want to be in the same position for the rest of my life. So I want to do something else. So maybe if I move here and help you out a little bit more, I can be better for the business and I can just help you more in general. So when we opened Ute, I and I think two other girls were the only ones that worked there. And I started doing a lot of like the back office work and I helped with front desk and then slowly just kind of like learned everything and moved up. And now I am kind of just where I am now with everyone. And I still work treating clients, but I also manage the girls and the schedule and I help with Ben and social media and I help Vicky and I help Champsha. So I do pretty much everything, <laughs> but I am really happy with it and I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. That's amazing. Thank you so much for that introduction. And last but very much not least, uh, Ben, I would love to get you to, to introduce a bit more about your background and your experience since joining, given that you are the newest joiner, although not not still not too new. So uh, I'm Benjamin Behrouz. Uh, I've been in the digital space since 2007. Um, I started my career with an internship with Sony Music and the world kind of opened up. Um, I was fortunate enough to have a lot of amazing people kind of at the behind me, kind of pushing me and advocating and putting me in amazing um, different situations. So through my career, I've worked in different spaces, but I think um, understanding and future casting what's to come within a business. I think that's my strong mm -hmm. suit. So walking into Butte and as Amir elegantly kind of shared about our initial interaction, um, 
So I, I understand the space. I understand um, aesthetics in regards to the perception that people have in this wall that we need to kind of get over to make people feel in a comfortable place as well as being accessible. So me coming on, um, I was able to help complement was what, what was already there. So I wasn't coming into anything that was on fire. It was more so something being able to take that next step forward to be able to scale. So I think a lot of um, systematic things to make sure we we're able to consistently do them, put things in place for future for us to be able to do. And working with an amazing team, I think each person on this uh, in this room right now that's kind of sharing, they fit the puzzle. And I think you can't have everyone saying yes. You can't have everyone saying no. There's a yin and yang. So there is a balance here. And I think everyone in this room kind of fills that balance and puts together this puzzle piece because without the people in this room, uh, parts would fall apart. So everybody kind of carries their weight and helps everything move forward. And at the end of the day, they're doing what's best for the business. And I think that is something that was said and Lexi just said that. And I think that's very true. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, people are like, do we do the best for the business and kind of be more selfless and giving, making sure the business has a better way forward. Yeah, no, I love that perspective. And thank you so much for that intro. That's such an amazing place to start at Sony Music. I mean, particularly in the marketing space, that's incredible. Um, but yeah, you put it so eloquently. It's something I can definitely see and just feel on the call with you all that you are all so invested in the work that you're doing and so invested in driving it forward together. You've all obviously shared that you all wear many hats, which is very, you know, typical, I think, of small teams that are very mission driven driven. So I wanted to just ask you, Amir, when you were looking to build out your team, how did you prioritize in terms of who you were bringing on first and for which function? When was it that you decided to expand outward further into more of the operations and then marketing from a marketing perspective? You know, how did you make those decisions based on what you knew you wanted to do for the business? To be quite honest with you, it wasn't easy because mm -hmm. whoever knows me, it's my way or highway and everything the way I want, everything the way I want or it's not happening. And uh, I started like, you know, at some point you have to start utilizing your work mm -hmm. to people. So how do you do that? you first you close your surrounding with your inner circle you know you're looking at the inner circle you know mm. the people that you trust and you could turn around and walk away and know they got it mm -hmm. and they will do without you even reminding them you know exactly what you would do if you weren't there and that was very important and then plus you know it's it's my core believe that growing comes within mm. Ben is the only outsider that we brought and put into a position that he is give him a title mm -hmm. you understand the rest are ground up yeah Lexi and I told him <clears throat> I don't think I interviewed Lexi I, I wasn't I was in New York and I, when I walked in I, I told him my manager is like who's that she goes to me that's the new hire so how come I, I didn't interview her you know she goes to me you're gonna like it she's good don't worry <laughs> and I said are you sure and she goes yeah yeah I'm sure I said okay and even Sh I think Shamsha didn't even interview me uh, I think she she interviewed with my business partner at the time but I remember on the second interview we asked for a second interview and then uh I said you live in Tennessee she goes yeah I said I said and you want to come here she goes yeah she goes, give me the job and I come. And I said, okay, let's see, come, you're hired. And, you know, just, and I told her, I, I said, you be a team player. You mm -hmm. show, you know, you're a team player, you're dedicated, you do things right, you grow within the company. And, you know, <clears throat> me and Shamsha, we, you know, at some point in our career of working together, we decided to part ways. You know amicably uh, but uh you know two three months later you know we re look it was not, nothing bad blood you know it's just these are the people i we sat down on a starbucks we hashed out everything and i think three months to four months later and she was doing something else somewhere else and i told her listen you know you're just gonna walk back into the place like 
nothing happened. You just, uh, you know, you were off yesterday and you're just coming, you know, and she did that and, you know, nothing happened after that. And she's been there for me. I've been there for, you know, this work. And, you know, she grew. I, I, I promised her. I said, you do right, you'll grow. And same as Lexi, same as whoever that is coming up that they're not, you know, they are not in this podcast. It's, my message is all of the time, time same. Do right by the company, you'll grow. Right. And it's not right by me, right by uh-huh. the company. Yeah, a lot of you know this. Uh, they have this uh, thing that they have. You have to you know kiss up to the leader, you know, mm. in order to grow. But that's not it. I just put it in their head. Do the, do the right thing by the company, and then you grow. And you know you set up your inner circle, people that you trust, and then you start building it based on that. Listen, when it comes to a small operation, it's very easy for you to get one or two people that think like you, they're out of their freaking mind like you. Like I know I'm, I know I'm crazy. You know, I, I know <laughs> things that I do or say at times or the way I approach things. Everybody's looking at me like, you know, I just like lost my mind. But mm. I, you know, there is a method to my madness. And in order to work with me, you have to understand that method. You know, you, you'll get a 3 a.m., 5 a.m. text message from me or phone call at that time. It's been times that I have told Shamsha, wake him up. And that he goes to me, she goes to me, but it's 2 a.m. in L.A. I said, I don't care. Wake him up. You know, you had all these people that with you. And then, mm-hmm. you know, then Vicky came as the new partner, a new place. You know, I, in the beginning, you know, Vicky was used to me. Oh, look at he's so proper. You know, he comes in a suit and tie, well-dressed soft-spoken because they never saw the animal that walks in through the door. Uh, that's me, my personal life. Right. And then I, <clears throat> I'll never forget. <laughs> it's the grand opening and that, you know, my, you know, the dear leader, you know, kicks in as soon as mm-hmm. I walk in the door, her eyes were like, she couldn't recognize me because <laughs> I was in that go You're mode. In the mode, right. Yeah. And, and then, you know, it took a while, but I think now she gets it, you know, it took a while. She couldn't comprehend. She, she's like, I've never seen it, such a thing in my life. I was like, this is nothing. Get used to it. And she goes, <laughs> He's an, an animal, hundred percent. You know, yeah. I said, I said get, get used to it. You know, things like, you know, I want things certain way. I'll walk around the spot and if I see pizza her on the floor, I'll freak out. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. The lighting, if the lighting is not hitting and it's not enough contrast on something, you know, if I see fingerprints on something that is, you know, you know, things, little things, but yeah, uh, poor Vicky. So yeah, I mean, look, Vicky was the, you know, the, the latest and she, you know, it took a while for her to adapt to my crazy way of doing things, but here we are. And then everybody can, you know, can speak to that. You know, I was just going to say, that's the thing I think that's so important for other business, you know, business owners or beauty and wellness entrepreneurs, any entrepreneur that is looking to build a team around them is just understanding what your needs are as a leader and what the business's needs are. And if that is a business that is going to need to have the marketing director waking up at 2am to deliver on some work or consult on something, then, you know, it's, being clear about that, setting out those expectations from the onset, you know, something that Shamsha, you shared and Lexi, you as well, um, that really resonated was that you both said that, you know, Amir really gave you a chance when you were kind of brand new and very green in the space. And I think that that is where I have seen in, in my consultations with beauty business owners, wellness business owners, the best talent comes from hiring for the people and not hiring for the role. It's something I've talked about with our last podcast guest, uh, Stacey Krizan, but it's really about finding people who are really hungry to grow and really kind of grow up through the ranks and really take the business to the next level. And it's not necessarily about finding someone always that has, you know, the perfect resume because it doesn't always translate to what your needs are for your business. So the next question I would have for you is just, you know, being on the call with with all of you and and having so many of you having been with Amir for so long, what what do you do in terms of retention? How do you retain your people? The retention, I don't know what it is. I, I'm very demanding. Um, I want things a certain way. I want what I want. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see things. But at the same time, I'm very 
pragmatic, I think, at times. But so, at, at times, like, when there's a line is crossed, I have to prove a point. But yeah, the, the retention, listen, uh, it's worked out for some reason. The, the ladies can, you know, talk wide. Yeah, uh, I was going to yeah. I, I yeah. say, I would love to get Shamsha, your and Lexi, particularly the two of you, just given that you have, have had the most tenure, but certainly, obviously, I would love to hear from Ben and, and Vicky as well on, you know, what is it that, that, that keeps you at Bote, that keeps you, you know, with Amir, that keeps you still excited after six years, eight years? You know, what has it been that has kept you from turning over? Lexi, you want to go? Um, I feel like the biggest thing was I started when Butte opened. So I see Butte and like our little family because for a while it was kind of like me, Vicky, Amir, all of us hanging out with like three clients on the schedule waiting to have a full schedule and we did kind of make it was almost like a little family so I feel like my attachment is very much to them too as people but then also Shamsha and me had worked at Amir's spa in Midtown for a while I don't know exactly how many years so I had already not very long very yeah, short, but still I had already have to get her too exactly but pretty much we kind of just like made our little family so Families go through a lot of ups and downs, and we definitely have a lot of not arguments, but we see things differently. I think all being from different places and just speaking differently. And I think it's good because especially yeah. with staff, I always have a different opinion on how everyone should be treated or if there's a different way we should be doing things to benefit them or make them happier, all while getting everything done under yeah. a mere circumstances to perfection as much as we possibly can. And it's definitely really hard to achieve that perfection, but we do our best. Yeah, no, I love that perspective. And I think that it's it's one of those things where it also seems like there is this culture on your team and you guys can obviously shout if this isn't the case, but it does seem like Amir, you've fostered this culture of people, you know, you having a very strong personality, but people still feeling comfortable to, to come and challenge you oh, yeah, in certain exactly. situations. That, 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 I mean, we've had some, uh, lately I've been getting accused of being, uh, turning soft. That's coming from <laughs> Shamsha and Lexi telling me I have become soft. No, we had some, look, we had some serious, very loud mm -hmm. discussions between us, which, you know, I got yelled at, which, listen, I don't mind. You know, I know it's coming out of a good place, out of good heart. You mm -hmm. know, and, you know, those happens. I mean, I, I love those. You know, there, there was a lot of screaming at each other. You know, everybody knew nobody's getting fired because they're screaming at me. Because they want me to calm, you know, calm down and or, you know, you know, doing certain things because, you know, I was look, I was trying to make a deal to we were trying to acquire a different med spa and mm -hmm. I did everything I could to make it happen. Then we got my uh, uh, auditor agent Shamsha, you know. No, 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 no. You know, it was it was a big discussion. Then Lexi jumped in attacking me. And then like, Vicky with her soft voice, you know, uh, we have a thing in Persian, you know, say they, they cut your throat with a piece of cotton. And then that's Vicky come to dinner with her soft, soft voice. And may I say something here? You know, may I? Ben laughing. He knows what I'm talking about. That's what he knows. You know, may I say something here? What if we do this this way? What you know? How would you? And then like she puts me in the trip, and I still want the place. Then I got two of these girls like screaming at me. I have become soft. What happened to me? And you know, things happens like that. You know, they want me to be dear leader to them, and I'm like, no. I mean, just like I'm, I want the place. I'm trying to make a deal happen, and and you know, you juggle it. You know, the, you know, and then sometimes. Can I speak to this? Yes. yes. I hear yeah. my name an awful lot here, <laughs> but I'm going to kind of give you the whole shebang about Amir in just maybe one or two sentences. Yeah. Yes, he has his ways. 
Yes, it has to be perfection. Yes, he wants everything now. But as tough as it can be, two things. One is I've never learned how to clean better than I have today. And I'm a 57-year-old wife and mother. And I learned how to clean now that I know Amir. So that's always a good thing, right? But the bigger thing that I want to share is that his bark can be really scary, but nobody runs away. You know why? Because everybody knows that he's the one who's going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who makes you feel like you are family. And so no matter what craziness is going on, we all know that he loves us and he's going to take care of us and it's going to be in return as well. So that's what starts the day at five in the morning. Yes, I know that he's already up at three and I know he's just waiting till 501 to start sending those text messages to me, Shamsha, <laughs> Lexi, Ben, whoever will listen. We are certainly trained to do so and we do respond. So we have allowed this to be our world now and I wouldn't have it any other way. So yeah, there. Yeah. And then when I start counting my martinis on Instagram, uh, they know that, you know, <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's gone. He's gone to the dark side. <laughs> that's, when, that's when the do not disturb comes on. Is that right, guys? Huh? But he won't turn it on. He will continue huh? to bother you. <laughs> I, no, it's fine. Look, like honestly, that's why we have Wiki there to calm things down when it comes to like, you know, they know like I'm on the dark side. I've, I've gone to a different. I, I meant to meet Jesus. They to leave me alone. You know? <laughs> that's, that's why it's it's good that you're posting on social media to keep your team updated. Stop. Oh. You know, I do want to say this. Yeah, I think Amir has created this incredible balance of loyalty, not only to him but also the business. Yes, very all important. of the differences that we have, all the arguments we have, it's never about us as people. Mm -hmm. It's about where we see the vision of the business going. Mm. Um, and yes, Amir does have a spark. You're right. And once you're stopping, when you stop being terrified of it, and you get into the inner circle, it's a beautiful, chaotic place. Um, and you know, there's always potential. You know, you know, he's 15 steps ahead, and that's why nothing's making sense to you. So you do trust him a lot. Um, but at the same time, at the end of the day, I feel like we also feel like, okay, maybe everyone doesn't agree with this, but this is just not a good business decision. So, mm. um, so the fact that we have that much respect for him, but are still able to speak up, I think speaks volumes. And, you know, it was, it was times that I was getting silent treatments. And I said, I said, listen, you guys not responding is really bothering me. I want somebody to tell me F off, you know, say something, mm -hmm. you know, you know, say nobody's getting fired, you know, push back. <laughs> Why am I just like talking to myself? Like, I'm just like, somebody say something, please. You know? And, Sometimes and he just that, want to tire himself out. The answer is, is that we are all working. Yeah. <laughs> and we may not be able to answer if we're in the middle of a treatment or attending to all the tasks that we've laid out at 5 a.m. Yeah, I, you, you know, you wake up like Ben and you see 60 emails in 60 different subjects. And, you know... I, yeah, so, yeah. I think that's the amazing thing about, you know, because I, I would say, Amir, you know, from everything I've heard on this podcast, from everything I know of you already, especially knowing your overlapping similarities with Simon, you are likely just a creative mind that is tr turning constantly and you constantly have ideas. I you make up things as I walk. Yeah, exactly. I would imagine things are just constantly coming to you. You know, I know you guys have some really exciting initiatives that are coming forward, some projects that you guys are all working on. Um, so actually, as you pinged over to Ben, I did want to ask Ben, you know, given again, you are one of the newest joiners and are joining in slightly a different capacity being, you know, on the West Coast. Um, yeah. What is question for him what how, how much have you spent on a therapy so far and, <laughs> and what is it that drew you to want to work with vote and then what is it that's kept you working in this in this business and with this team um i'm on a espresso martini diet i try it. to keep myself consistent <laughs> on that that helps with everything that's going on Okay, um, I, I think just to kind of come back to what you initially asked about, about turnover and all these things that I was able to see as kind mm -hmm. of a, someone stepping in, there mm -hmm. is no revolving door. 
And I think right now, as you kind of see Amir right now talking about dictatorship and all this stuff, it's not really that. And I think Vicky right. talked to about it. There's a bark and it's there, but in, in reality, there's a system there. There's a reason why things are happening. Mm -hmm. And there is this reality of this benchmark that Amir set so high that's mm -hmm. allowed the spa to be visible in a group of many. So there's reasons yes. why this benchmark has been set. And you can kind of see it through the staff where initially when I would walk in, there wasn't a bond or anything there, but now I'm on the other side of the table and I'm giving out hugs in every room I go to because there definitely is a relationship that everybody has. And the reality is someone will stay an extra 15 minutes so the other person can go home to their family on time. Yeah. There is a reality of me looking at a lot of businesses or people check clocking in and clocking out. This is not that. Not like that yeah. There's a sense of ownership. There's a sense of ownership that people definitely take with their positions. And I think there is this, I think for me more so than everyone else where I've had to say no. And mm. just looking at the room, how it is saying no is not always the best thing. But I think there is this understanding that if you're looking out for the best interests of the business, mm -hmm. um, it's better to not be a yes man or woman, but actually be able to care and try to make a difference. So I think me being able to advocate for the business and kind of explain why we're doing certain things where the word no has to be used, where nobody really likes that. It's right. difficult. It's difficult, but I'm thankful that I've been given the trust of Amir and the rest of the team to kind of understand their vision and be able to create a structure where there's scale and there's things we can consistently do. So from the all the way in the back office side, the team is very much so meshed to one together. They work. And then the vision that Amir has for the front facing brand is, mm. is grand. And if you don't have that in a market that's growing this big, you're going to fall apart. You're not going to be able to keep up. So his right. hyper his hyper focusedness on the industry and who's not being serviced to us mm -hmm. doing Butte Men, which is coming, which is the very much so underserviced uh, industry that we're stepping into. So there's initiatives that we're taking. There's things that we're doing. And for me, um, there's not enough time in the day to work with to work with everybody. But what I said to Amir and I said to the team, I believe in what they're doing. So that's why I've I've been able to make myself more available. I've allowed myself to be in those walking on coals at times just to make sure that tomorrow we have a better tomorrow and what I said will happen. So there is this understanding of balance between the company having a future and anyone that is successful. And I don't, I'm sure you interview people all the time. The most successful businesses come from the craziest owners because they have these visions and they're able to hyper focus on things that others can't. And we are witness to it um, of exactly what that is, is that creative mind and having proper people in every channel to fulfill the puzzle. So we're able to consistently move forward. Absolutely. And I think you touch on something so important here that a lot of business owners, viewers, listeners would be really you know, interested to hear about is this idea of, you know, how to balance the, the long term, this kind of future proofing, this future vision, and also, you know, having a really high level of operational excellence in the day to day, you know, and making sure that the brand identity and the brand experience is, is, cro is, is crossing that chasm, right, is, is coming across and really is pushing in both aspects. And that's where, you know, to your point, having everyone be so accountable over their own function, but also willing to really roll their sleeves up and get into the dirt with all of the different channels, facets, functions, and having people from such diverse backgrounds is such an amazing thing when you think about building a team as kind of weaving, you know, a tapestry and this amazing fabric that any brand is really built on. So when you're looking for people to join your team, you know, how, number one, how big is your team now? Because I know that this group is a core group, um, but I know that it, it's overall a big team. Or just, overall is just Bote? Over, overall, I would like to hear, but Bote as well. Bote, what are we at? 15 now? 16? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think 15 yeah. right now. Yeah, 15 or 16, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, with Ben and his team, I mean, Ben has his own team as well. You're looking at 20-some people, 20-some, yeah. Yeah. For one That's location. Incredible. 
Yeah. For one location, that's incredible. Yeah. And one question I have for you, Amir, because marketing in particular, and obviously Ben, you can jump in on this as well, is something that I think that a lot of entrepreneurs do struggle with and particularly in this space, just given it is so saturated. What was the moment for you when you really decided, you know what, I need to get a marketing professional expert on my team? I mean, um, look, first of all, as a brand, you have to know, I always said this before, uh, you have to realize quickly what you are and what you're not. Mm. It's very important to realize that quickly, yes. you know, I, you know, <clears throat> we did Bote, I think me and Vicky sat down and credit to her. We, ca it was a very calculative moves that we did. We, you know, some of these poor people, they come open mess bars, they think they're going to become millionaires next day. Mm. And they go out and spend right off the gate, half a million dollars, $600,000 right. in, in an equipment. And they won't know which one to focus on to start with. Mm -hmm. In the other hand, as you know, Bote as big as it is, you know, we started with laser hair removal and endosphere and a diamond glow, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, and not all. It was like we brought like two laser. I think was I right? It was a two laser hair removal, Vicky, when we started. So she goes. I told her. I said, "Listen, Vic, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna." add as we grow and then we're going to mm. look at the season and if we want to add a different service you know we'll have to like add it right there and then mm -hmm. or we're going to have to go wait in the back of the line till the season comes back because if we get it on a, when the season is not right for the treatment we won't have that you know the money that you want to make and it's going to turn us off and then and then it's that that thing is going to be a back burner you know, and that's how we started. You know, we started with that. Then we added the uh, the third laser machine, and then we added the second industry. Then we added the fourth laser machine. Then we added the fifth laser machine. And it was around, I believe, I think it's winter time. I, I'm not sure. Vicky can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I said, listen, um, I'm thinking of doing this. She goes, are you sure? I said, she goes, I said, yeah, just go with it. It's the season. We got to do it right now. She goes, how soon right now? I said, tomorrow. She goes, <laughs> she goes, she goes how much is it going to cost? I said, 130000 She looks at me. I said, don't worry. We're good. And what did Sham say at that point? Is that that she wasn't out. there yet. Sham, but... you know, uh, back then, uh, she, she was away. She had a mm. bad injury and she wasn't. I mean, right now, she would have a freak out and she would, you know, uh, you know, come to my house and break my door down and stab me and leave. I, would have said, I, I have to say something, yeah. if you don't mind. So every year, Amir says to me, okay, this is it. We're good. Just we need this one machine. We're good. That's it. The one machine. And then a few months later, you know what? This is, We need this. This is good. This is all we need. We're good. And then we're good we're good we're good so we have all these we're good we have lots of really good machines we now. have two million dollars of good machines yes. yeah but that's an amazing thing too to consider because i do think that particularly when you are bringing in a team of estheticians you know they're looking also to grow what they're able to do and their exactly. you know the, their scope of practice and yeah. you know the treatments that they're able to offer to your clients to their clients and that is part of the the whole um vision that I think a lot of you guys have been speaking to, which is that you've really each been able to take a look at the business as this shared, almost like a baby. It's a baby. It's like a human baby, right? That you guys are all exactly responsible. Like you took the words out of my mouth. That's what I said. Yeah. And it's exactly how Simon, you know, again, you guys are very similar, but it is exactly how Simon framed Artemis to us at the beginning. It, it, it is this human baby that we're all responsible for, you know, developing and helping to grow. And then when all of your team members really have that um, mission that's driving everything that they do, they are more comfortable to speak up and say, hey, I actually don't think this is best for the business, the baby, right? Yeah. This might not yeah, be best I, for the baby. On a particular device, I'm hearing it every day. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but, uh, <clears throat> but no, I mean, we got to a point and then as far as like adding, you know, marketing, look, I was waking up at 3 a.m., you know, put my earpods on, 
and mm-hmm. listen to 50 different type of music, you know, before band and uh, crazy, my, like my brain, you have to be in my brain to realize what's going on. And as I'm answering emails, looking at bank account, doing my check, check marks. And, you know, I have my, you know, dog waking up, barking at me because he wants attention. So I, I listen to this music, it catches me. And I saw like, you know, I used to like text, uh, our uh, social media media person at times like I want this music from five seconds to like seventeen seconds on this treatment. Right. She goes. She goes. She used to say no. I said no, 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 no. Listen to me. Put it on. Right. Like you know, <laughs> I said put it on from five seconds to twelve seconds. It's gonna hit. Mm. And, and that that would happen. And then you know, it got to a point that we you know we got we added more stuff, and I felt like it was the time. This baby child is 18 now mm. and needs to go to college and get proper education. You know, Love and, that metaphor. Uh, yeah. Okay. And that's where we start looking for our, uh, you know, for a marketing director. And we were very clear with Ben how we would uh, want, how we would want, you know, the, the concentration be. And, uh, you know, here he is. Yeah. And how have you seen the business change since adding Ben to the team and adding that function to the team, that real kind of, to your point, that university education for the, for the business baby? Look, look, uh, look, it's, uh, I I don't think Ben even realized at the beginning what he was walking into. Uh, That was his first, uh, he thought it was going to be a, you know, you know, because he was dealing with Shamsha and Lexi in the beginning, you know, me and him Mm -hmm. had, you know, just, I think, a uh, couple of uh, interactions. And then, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it takes, look, it's an investment. It takes time. And you got to give yourself right. that 90 to 120 days to evaluate everything. And then, you know, you'll see the strength. You see the weaknesses. And then you have to, you know, concentrate on what you see it's working and could be add on. And then trim the areas that doesn't. And, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's the part so I, I think I mean the ladies can take it over I mean Vicky uh, she can you know uh, she's been more involved I asked her to be involved in the you know marketing aspects at times because her results are uh, her before and afters are you know out of this world so you know Vicky can attest to it too you know how marketing has been different uh, yeah. so I've seen price increase so where we started just a little bit more than a year ago with Morpheus, for instance, um, I can I can safely say that probably because of Amir um, and the way he's got us in our minds, everything is not just doing things as a standard, but to the highest standard. Mm. So with reading and researching and reading all the studies regarding any particular medical device that we have, we're not just doing the basic protocol of what is taught. It's knowing every in and out so that we are safe mm-hmm. and that we are effective and that we are, for instance, ranked top 1% in the nation for doing Morpheus. Um, that speaks for itself. So where we started, which was at one level for mm-hmm. where we were pricing it, has jumped to another level because there's no room to book. Um, and we have to book out now. And then Amir implemented standards that it has to be a certain way every single time. And that is the way it has to be for laser and for any other procedure. It has to be the same way every single time, because if something happens, then we can identify it very quickly and correct it. If you are haphazard or if you not adhere to what the protocols are here, it's going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. So it has to be the Amir standard. It has to be. And and that's the way we are trained. So first we have the training from our trainers, okay. and then we have the training here. And um, we are booked out months in advance. Mm. Crazy, crazy. That's Amir. So um, then Lexi created, she identified how the treatment was going to be, and she made it the Butte way. And can I tell you that we have people from original people coming here, clients, because they have tried it other places. Maybe they couldn't get in on the day that they wanted to here. They went somewhere else. Nope. 
they're coming they're going to get their appointment here and continue to do it the way she has personally trained every mm-hmm. single one of our estheticians to do it the beauty way and i am very proud of her for that because otherwise we would have just been I guess Just figuring it out on our yeah. own, it would have been individualized. Mm-hmm. It has to be done the same exact way by every esthetician. So that's just an example. And um, yeah. so I, I, ju- I just see the prices increasing where you're talking about, I think the name of this podcast is something about, about being in a saturated market. So in a saturated market where pricing should go down, mm. um, you're, we're seeing our prices go up comfortably more for us um, because we're dealing with um, a scheduling that is, our scheduling is very saturated. So right. um, that's my that's my two cents. No, I love that perspective. And especially speaking to the importance within any business of creating this brand identity and really doing things very uniquely. So this idea of the Bote way, right? You know, your clients are going to come to you because you are doing it in that way, because they can always trust the quality that you're delivering, the results that you're delivering, the experience they're going to get, the relationships that they're developing with your staff and team as well. It's so important when you are in, to your point, a really saturated market. New York City is a very saturated aesthetic market, but people are still waiting on the waiting list and waiting for a long time to come and get things done the Bote way. And to your point around Morpheus as well, being in the top 1% nationwide, that's that's a huge achievement, by the way. So congratulations to your team on that. But it really does speak Big to the way you do things. Yeah. Yeah, that's Vicky. Yeah, that's the single-handedly Vicky. Nobody it's else. Incredible, and I I think that that is also such a draw for potential um, candidates for you know new team members coming in is that you really have provided that opportunity for not only baseline education, but this additional branded education and this dive into the importance of this brand identity, the importance of creating such a repeated and repeatable customer experience where you know too, Amir, and you touched on this a little bit before, that every time that a customer or client is coming into Bote, they're getting the same experience. They're not getting a different experience from this esthetician. Little background on the numbers of uh, dollar wise in the industry is mm-hmm. I I like I told Vicky, I said, Vicky, we're in wholesale business. We're gonna provide first class, mm-hmm. you know, service, state of the art, top of the line machinery, technology, on top of our way of our way of doing things, which everybody sees result. Look, you, mm-hmm. you can, you know, there's 20 other places around us that they have Morpheus. Do they see uh, the same results? No. They come there shaking. Oh, it was so painful. I never saw a result. Oh, they like this. Look, comes, you know, two hours later, comes crying. Oh, Vicky, you know, this, like this. Look, just the proof is in the pudding. You know, it's just yeah. how you how you do it. And then, you know, then I said, like, listen, Vicky, uh, we're going to be in wholesale business. We're going to give every option possible to anyone out there to pay for the service and an affordable price mm-hmm. that possible, that is reasonable. And we got to, instead of, you know, waiting for that one client come every two weeks, we're going to have 14 clients a day lined up for you. And we're going to end up making more money. And I'm in a way, you know, at, you know, at, you may not believe it in a way, you know, I'll do the numbers in my head really quick. I'm a numbers guy. When it comes, I have everything, you know, it may not seem at the time, but, you know, I'll just like, look, 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 you know, if this we get this much, if there's mm-hmm. consumable that much, this is how much it's going to cost us. And yeah, we're good. So, you know, it, you know, you have to sell that to your team because they're all, you know, when you give them, a, you know, for example, we'll say X machine, we're going to just sell it at fifteen hundred dollars. Then their eyes, you know you know, pops out, are you crazy? This place is just starting, they sell it at 2000, starting at 2000. I said, no, 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 listen to me. This is what we're gonna do. But instead of that one client, we're gonna get 15 or 20 clients, which has mm-hmm. happened plenty of times. And uh, so, you know, that's what we try to do at Bote. You know, we give four, you know, first class services with the state of art 
you know, equipment with our, you know, our staff is flared and touched, added into it. And, you know, it became what it is. And now Ben came to, you know, to add on that. And Ben can, you know, you know, he's been, he's been there. He's, uh, you know, Ben, Ben first time came, you know, he, you know, uh, he was, you know, he was, felt a little bit out of place, but I think on his second day, it, you know, it felt like he was been there forever. So everybody, you know, had welcomed him and, and, you know, he couldn't talk, you know, touch on that as far as the marketing, you know, how he had planned for it and how to go about it. So I think um, so much. Um, so I think the first thing I can kind of address is just the, just me personally, just this um, understanding that if we spend X amount of dollars on ads, how much are we spending on the house that we're inviting them to? So that media that we're creating, if that's not created properly, then what are we doing? So to be able to kind of take an approach where I am a stickler for certain things. I am a stickler for making sure we are able to convey what we want to the users on the other side. So you'll have me in the back saying, take 42, take 43, mm -hmm. because I understand that media is so important and it's known within, within anything aesthetic, the number one place where people are finding information about new procedures and options is social media, is YouTube. These are the places. Mm -hmm. So for us to be at the forefront, to offer information, to give people resources, to um, solve the problems that's keeping them up at night, you know, those are the things. And I think it really comes into, Vicky's a strong component of kind of doing the education side. So I know we've spoken about Morpheus 8 and there's this big taboo about it being painful. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be painful if you're going to the proper location and they're doing the things properly. So there definitely is this tabooness where we're bringing people out of this taboo where they're, mm -hmm. they're scared about doing certain things to where now we're their little secret where the, their spa ritual has changed. Their spa yeah. ritual is to see Vicky give her a hug and have them feel amazing for the next little bit because she's able to give their skin a uptick in terms of feeling better and giving them extra love that it needs. Um, I think in marketing in general and in, in a saturated market like we're in, um, being able to be accessible, understandable, and mm -hmm. to be able to be in the right place at the right time. I think a lot of med spas in general, they think if they just go in and boost a post, it's going to solve all their problems, but right. it doesn't do that. It doesn't do that. It's really much. So for me, um, I have to come in and say, Hey, we can't do it this way. We have to do it this way because I can analyze and with numbers show that it's actually converting with people's names. So for me to come in and to kind of give those structural items where there's a lot of white noise to I'm sure all the people listening, they're hearing, we'll get you this many leads for this much and da, da, da. But right. at the end, it's, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a wash, you know, it's, you're sure. losing more money than you're actually making. And it's just going in circles, but you feel like I'm getting leads, but you're losing money. So being of able course. to kind of pull that back, be able to drive down the cost per lead. And then at the end of the day, the normal industry standard, I think, is about 65% return rate in terms of people mm. going to med spots. For us, it's about 90%. So the wow. people that are coming to us, they're coming to us, and that 10% really has to do with them maybe moving or just not able to come because we're not visible to them. So there definitely is something about me maybe opening up some new doors, but it 100% has to do with the providers on the other side, making sure mm. that... From the second they hit that stairwell, they, they have that amazing smell to the person yeah. they see at the front door, to someone actually knowing their name, caring about them, and you become a regular face in the space because it is more so of a family environment that you will see. And yeah. it's, it's something that is hard to explain because there's so many different chapters to it, but I think our our reviews, our responses from our patients. I think the gratification that people feel by visiting us at the end of the day, because I'll be at the spa and I'll see someone come out and I'll see the hug that they give to their technician. And that, that you don't have that it every makes business. It, that, makes, that makes me smile actually when I see those stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you, know, the, yep. you know, I'm just like, I look around and I'm like, ah, nice. 
I love that you guys keep touching on the senses and the sensory experience that comes along with your brand, particularly when you're highlighting, you know, walking up the stairs and, and smelling the scent and the signature scent, because it really does, it, it, it is the mark of a love mark, right? So if anyone's familiar with this, if they're not, highly recommend reading the book Love Marks or even just some more information about it. Um, it's a theory that was brought in the marketing space by the former CEO of Saatchi and Saatchi global, but it really is about creating that love mark for people where they are just, they adore coming to your space. They love to be in it. They smell it. They touch it. They taste it. They feel it. There's just, you're in, engaging them in every sense of the word and you're cultivating love and respect, um, which is really what you're also giving back. And then your customers are your biggest advocates. You have the space of super fans, which is clear based on that 90% return rate. And I think Ben, to your point, you know, obviously you can drive as many high quality leads as you want to a business, but if the business itself can't convert them, then they're going to fall to the wayside and they're going to go to another business. And so that's where, you know, that part of the transition and the team really working so collaboratively is so important to create those lifetime customers as well. So I think Lexi and, and Vicky in particular, that's where, you know, you guys have come in and just created this amazing space um, for them to be able to, to do that and really convert these customers and make them feel so welcome and excited to be with you and to choose Bote over the many other options in such a saturated market as New York City, as we've touched on previously. Um, so the last question that I have for you guys before we just do our little fun question that we do at the end of every episode is, is there any other advice that you would give to, you know, entrepreneurs in the space, business owners in the space, hiring managers when they're looking for people, you know, what, what qualities and traits do you look for when you're hiring? Um, how do you know when it's time to let someone go? If there is someone that you just don't know if they're the right fit for you, you know, any advice that you would give at all um, before we move on to our last question of the episode? Um, from what I've witnessed, because I'm not as integral a part of the hiring or letting go, is I, I witness a struggle from Amir um, to go to that part of, is it time to let someone go? Because he is very loyal. So all of the shenanigans that you're hearing, um, if you if we're going to talk turkey, um, it is really about him being so loyal. And I think that what I witness is before something like that happens, I see a talk happening. I see private talks happening and him trying to get people on track. And so it's not just a simple she didn't make her numbers or she didn't do a great job. He's going to try to see the best in someone. And really before that is going to that direction, he is going to give a pep talk or a fireside chat talk and find out what's really going on. So that's my take on it. I do not know of too much of letting go. So I see a lot of saving actually. Great. Yeah, no, Lexi. that's such a good perspective. Yeah, Lexi, I'd love to hear from you knowing that you are really kind of on the ground with the team. Yeah, I feel like with the hiring process, me and Sham should do a lot of it. And what we've been saying recently is that we try to hire with people that we could almost see ourselves at the beginning in and what we know we can build on and we can help them progress and just grow as a person and in the business in general. So I feel like we just need a good foundation and then we can help them as much as possible. That's just always what we try to do. Shab Shab. Yeah, so hiring, you, you know, it's, it's important to know what you're getting yourself into. You could have the most experienced person with the worst attitude or the worst work, work ethic and they are going to cost you so much more time and money than someone that you could have trained who actually cares, who's going to learn and be an investment. And something else I've noticed is, especially with Butte, this, this family atmosphere, even with the incredible amount of clientele we have, how busy we are throughout the days, 
it never feels packed. It never feels like anything but like a safe little serene place. Um, and Lexi and Vicky have done such a good job of like cultivating that between the staff and the client. It's not just a business transaction. Um, but with that being said, with the staff, I feel like either with that family dynamic, you either melt right in or it's just not going to work. And you could tell very early on because mm. like you said, you got to balance personalities and this and that, and everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. And as long as they can work together, that's fine. Right. But you can't have pieces falling apart. Uh, usually I, you know, lately, uh, it's been a struggle in this market to hire as mm. you know, I, I mean, we just went on a spree of hiring. Mm -hmm. And after up and down, we were able to a statistician for now, one person. And wow. this was insane. insane. One person and one administration that we did. Uh, you know, people come in. Look, it happens all the time. You, I, I take full responsibility for it. I so many times I thought a person is going to, you know, hit it out of the park and mm. Within the first week, I'm like, I messed up. You know, an interview is you don't meet the real person. You meet the sure. representative, you know. It's sure. Not... I like that from that perspective of yeah, them sending yeah. in their representative for the interview. Yeah. So, you know, and then, you know, usually like, you know, on a second interview, we try to see if they, they feel more comfortable. I mean, we just had, you know, the girls had first set of interviews and they told me, you're going to be, you know, da -da -da, excited with all of them. And then second set comes, one person comes, just, they just roll out of bed. Mm. And I just, you know, I, 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 as soon as I was done, I walked that room and I text Jamsha. I said, I you know, like 20 thing. people, five made it to final interviews with Amir. And out of that, we picked two. And I have to say, I'm very, very happy with all the feedback <laughs> I'm getting about them. Yes. So yeah, it's, sure. it's hard to find the right staff, but when you do, it's worth it. I mean, yeah. when you know, look, I don't like to usually fire people uh, unless you do something that is just like, and there is no going back. I usually like try to, look, I, I always tell them like this, look, this is your place too. You know, you walk into a place that everything is ready for you. You can actually take a percentage of no risk. I mean, who's going to give you that, right? And, you know, and I try to, you know, some people understand, some people don't. The people that understand, you see them in this, you know, group that they're sitting. Uh, and people that don't understand, look, same people that came, they asked you, they begged you to have a chance and turn out not to be those people that you want. And you try to give them constructive criticism. They, they get very defensive. And when, you know, they know it, they're just not fitting. They just know it. Like, you know, when you're walking there, because every look out of all those personality, everybody's friends, you know, and, you mm. know, pretty much everybody's friends, you know, everybody's, you know, friendly friends. And then if you're not, and from that cloth, you immediately stand out, you know, this is not your place. And, uh, look, they end up resigning or leaving and they go work for your competitor. Look, whoever that left with me on a good terms, either they came back or they became very great at whatever they left. Mm. Amir, yeah. Yeah, Amir, for as serious Amir is, he gives people a lot of chances. Mm -hmm. Like Vicky was saying, like we have to step in sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, and I can see, you know, and that's something that Vicky had highlighted as well is, you know, the importance of, and, and, you know, I know Shamsha and Lexi, you both talked about this too, but, um, you know, the importance of, of trying to, to, to provide that opportunity for feedback and constructive feedback and really trying to redirect people um, so that you can hopefully save talent if they just genuinely need a little bit of coaching and guidance. Um, something else that Shamsha, you said that I really wanted to highlight that I think is such a great point is just seeing the people that you're bringing on as investments in the, in the long-term vision of the business and really, you know, not necessarily needing someone to tick all of the 
you know, resume boxes or all of the exact boxes, but if they come in and they're really willing to learn, they have a great attitude, they feel like they will be a great addition to the business, seeing that long-term vision through and allowing for that short-term knowledge that, you know, you will have to spend time with them, training them, getting them up to speed, but that ultimately it's going to be for the best of the business because they are going to be a really good fit. That's likely going to retain and and not create this revolving door, um, which I think is just fantastic. So I just want to open up the floor. If there's anything anybody else wants to share that you think would be of value to our listeners or other beauty entrepreneurs in the space, professionals in the space that are looking to climb the ranks as you all have, Um, um, anything else before I ask you guys our final question of stay, the episode? Stay in your lane. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Because I, uh, I, I look, love this I, mantra I, in general. Look, uh, how can I put it? Like, you want to get into it? Good for you. Mm-hmm. You know, this. You know, just focus on yourself mm. and stay in mm-hmm. your lane. Don't go into a business thinking. You're going to go, you you know, you have to open a business and say, I'm going to start from zero clients Mm -hmm. and I'm going to build my clients. Every single, look, I've been involved in 12 med spas over the years. And every single one of them, beside my first one, I started with zero clients and I built it. Mm -hmm. And all of these people in this room beside Ben, Ben, they told me, do you want us to move clients from here? What did I say? I said, no. We're gonna mm. take, we're gonna make our own clients. We're gonna start having our own clients. One thing about me, I am relentless. Mm. You can have more money than me. You can be smarter than me. You will not outwork me. Can I say something? Yes. I'd love to maybe help you end mm-hmm. with sharing the dichotomy of how I see a mirror, mm. which uh-huh. is mm-hmm. you start with him and he gives you a gift. And it's a book on the art of war. I, okay. So that is, this is how you start with a mirror. Sun Tzu, yeah. And it is, so we opened up Butte where we have our walls being our iconic walls with our prints. And he hands me this book and I'm nervous. Like, what did I just get my, what I thought we were just like in love mode. My, I'm married. I'm happily married 30 years. I'm talking in love with my business partner as yes. my business partner. Yes. But I look at him as my son, but I he's I, handing me a book about I war. Said, get ready, we're going to war. Yeah, you so thought honeymoon. I, you were thinking honeymoon business period. Yes, you know? And I'm scared <laughs> now I have to read this book about war, how I'm going to be, you know, a general. So, and in the next moment, what I'm learning is that the same the same person there in that little corner there in that screen there, he gives his staff an hour lunch together. Mm. Unheard of. I have never witnessed this in any job I've ever had that the entire place closes down for an entire hour so that they can all eat together and put make one of the rooms into a little picnic area so that everybody can eat together as sisters, as a family. Mm. I have never, this is how it is every single day here. So the guy who's telling me about the art of war and he's telling you about how he's going to bulldoze you, he's giving his staff, he's closing down his spa so that they can eat lunch together and have a a nice hour together of peace and harmony. So that's, that's the, I just want to share that secret. (laughs) Thank you, Vicky, for that insight. I think it is really amazing and important to have, you know, that dichotomy really well represented. I think it was Ben earlier in the episode who was speaking to this this yin and the yang. And and I know, you know, Shamsha and Lexi spoke to it as well. But just that balancing point to your point. And, you know, I think the one thing that does really shine through from all of you is just this incredible adoption of this work ethic and just really hitting the grindstone. And I'm sure some days it's easier than it is. 
is other days. You know, I'm sure there are some days where it can be a little bit exhausting, but clearly you guys have created an incredible brand, an incredible business. Uh, so excited to see what's to come. I have to get in there, so I will have to, <laughs> I'll have to get on the wait list. Um, but I did just want to close us off with one question that we do ask to all of our guests um, on the podcast, which is, what does beauty mean to you each personally? Uh, because the answers to this question are always so different and interesting, and we just love to get everybody's individual perspective. So Amir, if you want to kick us off with what beauty means to you. You want to know? I do. Okay, here. One second. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That yeah. is the best answer I've had so far, I have to say. Sorry to everyone else who's been a podcast guest, but yeah. this is really the best answer we've had. <laughs> that the is ratings went beauty. through the roof. The ratings just went through the roof right what, what is the name? We need to know the name now. Bruno. Bruno. Oh, Bruno. Perfect yeah. name. Bruno the beauty. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. All right, yeah. perfect. Ben, do you want to tell us what beauty means to you? Um. I, I think mine is more so on the psych. Uh, it's more so on the way one feels. Um, I think mm. for me, uh, true beauty comes in when I see someone come out of the room when they are getting a procedure or they've talked about some of the hardships they faced or their insecurities that they felt when they're by themselves. It's two o'clock in the morning and they're just with their own feelings. For me to have that person be happy with who they are when they look at themselves and to be happy in their own skin, that's beauty. That, that, that for me is what I see is being able to achieve that mentally being happy with oneself as well as physically. So when you look in the photo, it gives you that empowers you to be able to go do whatever that you weren't necessarily able to. That's beauty for me. And I'm able to see it a lot now with kind of working behind Vicky and kind of seeing some of the stuff that she's doing. Some of the before and afters, I I get shocked. Like I'm shocked. I've been working in this industry for this long, but it's really about the providers and what they're doing. So some of the conversations I've had with the people that worked with the staff at Butte and where they were before compared to where they are after, it really does make such a big difference in people's happiness. And that's beauty for me. People, someone that can be happy with oneself that's beauty for me. I love that. And Vicky, I know you have to jump soon. So if you want to just quickly give us your, what does beauty mean to you? It's such a big, big, such a little question, but with a big meaning um, for me personally is uh, I, we have famous people who come here and we have People who are up the road, single mom, maybe saved her last dollar to come here and have do something special for herself. Maybe she was getting out of a bad relationship and mm -hmm. this coming here had meant everything to her. And that smile and that touch and that hug, I, I, it's not a transaction here. It's really all about the whole experience and for me personally, it's the way I feel when somebody is leaving and I see they don't want to leave and they want to hold on to me. And as I started out by introducing myself, when I um, have dedicated myself to uh, practicing in the honor and memory of people that I loved, it is full circle. So that is a beautiful moment for me and the word beauté. I love using that word in the word beautiful and it just makes me feel so happy and good. And I just want to say thank you for including me today in this. Um, I'm just in the sort of the background and I, I, I appreciate you giving me a little bit of a voice here. And so thank you so much. You and have a beautiful a beautiful Absolutely rest of the fun. day. That was such an amazing response. Thank you so much for joining Vicky and Shamsha. What does beauty mean to you? Um, when I think of that term, it's it's more of a feeling that comes to mind, mm -hmm. like a feeling of just like peace or like happily content. And that can be after you've had an incredible service with Vicky, or when you see a beautiful sunset and you've had a rough day and it takes you away from it for a second. For me, it's really, really that feeling of things are okay. 
things are nice. There's, there's, there's good things. So that's what it means to me. It's, I love that too. It's, you guys are all, you guys all have such great answers to this question. Lexi, last but certainly not least, what does beauty mean to you? I feel like mine is kind of a combination of Ben and Shamsha and it's just giving the confidence to someone so they can live life freely and happily and just how they treat other people. And you know, they're same thing, content with their life and able to live it to the fullest. So great. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you guys all so much. This was such a great episode, such a pleasure to record with you all. I think it's going to be so amazing and our listeners are definitely going to get a lot of insight and a lot of value from it. And, you know, you may get a little influx of <laughs> job requests. Yeah. You see, I, help myself. I know. I help myself. And Bruno is just, you know, stealing the show right now. So this is the perfect time to cap us off. Glow and tell listeners and viewers, I will see you next episode. Thank you so much to the Bote team. And I will see you all soon. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Glow and Tell. Please like, subscribe, comment, and follow anywhere where you listen to podcasts. We'll see you next time.